Welcome back to Schmetz Outdoors. Uh, on today's video, as you guys have already seen, we're going to be building some weasel boxes. Um, I already have five boxes built like this. Um, I've caught, uh, there ain't a lot of weasels in my area. They're a fun animal for you to catch. I caught, I've caught six weasels in these in the last two seasons. But again, I only had them out for like a week each season. So I caught four two years ago and I caught uh, two last year. But again, as soon as I caught weasels, I pulled my boxes last year. Because I only really meant to catch one last season. I ended up catching two. Um, I'm building a few more boxes because I have a few more areas that I feel like uh, probably could be good locations to catch weasels. Um, and I just didn't have boxes to try out. Uh, try putting a box there to see if I could catch one. Um, again, in my area, I'm mostly farm country, so I'm trapping around sloughs, you know, farm places, that type of stuff. Um, basically, uh, what I tried to do with my boxes is uh, put my box where there's grass on each side of a road with a culvert going underneath and set my box by the culvert. Um, so we're going to get right into it. Um, I'm going to go sort of step by step, but I'm going to, I'm not going to show you how to do each item. I'm going to kind of explain to you what I did. But we're going to go kind of through step by step on how I built my weasel box. And I'm going to go through a little bit of reasoning right away here on why I have it built the way I do. Um, I feel like, you know, there's plenty of different designs out there. Uh, I feel like my design's fairly simple. Again, it works well. It's proven, like I said, over the last two years. You know, in two weeks of weasel trapping, I've got six weasels caught um, for five boxes out. And actually, two years ago, I didn't even have five boxes. I only had like two or three out. So, you know, take that for what you will. So, um, to me, I feel like that's pretty good numbers in the country that I have to trap. Again, because I don't feel like there's a ton of weasels around my area. All right. So, here's my weasel box. Uh, pretty basic, simple box. Um, we're going to go over all the dimensions and I'm, I'm actually building three more. So I got enough boards cut for two boxes there and another, this will make one full box. So the design of my weasel box, I got, you know, a full bottom. My sides are actually tucked in a little bit. So my box isn't a full width of this cedar plank. Um, and then I just have a hinge on the back. And you can see how I have my front is cut in half. That actually works very well because the way I have my box set up, and I'm going to go over that here in a minute, my weasel tickbully are still sticking out the hole. So they get actually froze in here. And by making my hole split in half, I can just pick them right out. Whereas if you had like a solid front and only had your lid pull up, you know, if your weasels froze kind of laying over the top of this, they kind of get weighed like that, weighing in there. You're going to have a very hard time getting them out of there. You may actually have to pull your whole box. Where with this design, I can actually just open my box, pick them right out, um, and just stick another trap in there. Um, this box is designed for, you know, the Victor rat trap, essentially. Um, I like to use the ones with the... Uh, big yellow pans on there. I know some guys like to use different ones, but these have worked well. And I have this box designed just for these traps. Um, again, I use, my boxes are a little bit different than a lot of them that I've seen. My box is a little bit longer. And I'm gonna explain why that is. Two reasons for, two reasons for that that actually work out very well. Um, to build my box, I'm using a six foot long cedar fence board. So I don't even know exactly how wide they are here. So they're five and a half inches wide and they're about, I don't know, half an inch, maybe five eighths of an inch thick. By making mine the dimensions I have it, you can see where I have the lines already marked on here for cutting this one. So I have both sides, both ends, the bottom, and whatever's left ends up being my top. And you can see about how much I have hanging out. It's like an inch and a half or so hanging out there. So I use the entire board. I know some designs that I've seen have been a little bit shorter, and then they end up with a little piece of scrap board left. 
I don't really see the reason for that. Um, all right, so we're gonna open my box up here. And I'm gonna show you why I have my box designed a little bit longer. So I'm just getting my trap set in here. All right, pull my pan back up. So I just raised my pan all the way up. So the way I have my box designed, you can see how tight my trap is side to side in there. This is about three and a half inches wide. The trap is about three and three eighths of inches wide. I don't want to give the animal any room to sneak over here on the sides of my pan, you know, and get around my pan. I know some guys catch them and the animals are coming out. To me, that's a mistake. That means they've stole your bait already and ate your bait and are on the way back out. I do not want that. I want to catch them on the way in. My design is also a little bit different than a lot of them I've seen because I leave a gap here. I got about an inch or so on back. And there's a reason for this as well. And then I'm going to shut my box just for a second here. You can also see that my hole, it's hard to tell a little bit, but my hole is actually offset up in my board just a little bit. Um, and you can see in the opposite end of my box, I actually drill holes, just air holes. Um, and we'll get to those in a minute here. So by having my hole, what I figured out is my hole is about level with the top of my pan when my pan is all the way up. It's hard, hard to get that on camera for you guys, but you can kind of see right there's my pan. You can see my hole. I wanted my trap setting back just a little bit so there's this gap in here. Because I feel like if a weasel is standing right here, and I had, we'll just move my trap here. Try not to get caught. If a weasel is standing right here and I have my trap all the way tight up to here, I feel like the weasel can almost like bound and land over here and may not actually even get caught or you're going to get a real wonky foul catch on them. And then, you know, if they do skip over it again, then they're back into your bait and they can come back. And if they can go from here up to here again and out and they literally could get by without getting caught. Because you got to remember, weasels kind of bound like this. So from them going from here, they could easily, you know, bound and skip over your pan. By me leaving this, my pan is about two inches almost from the whip of my pan to here. I feel like the animal is going to go from here. That's the first thing they're going to try and put their feet on. And all of the catches I have have literally been their front feet and they're caught basically right behind their front shoulders with the trap. You know, so the animal is caught like mid body and they're, and again, you're basically suffocating them. I mean, with a rat trap, I feel like it breaks their back and a couple of them, it's done that as well. But I'm making sure, like I said, as soon as they're stepping on there, they don't have any room on either side of my trap to get around the side of my trap and they can't really bound over my pan by leaving my trap set back a little bit. Uh, another thing I've seen with other people's designs that they don't have that I have in mind so I actually have a little screw right here in my trap or in my box. It's only sticking up like, you know, a quarter inch, but basically what I have is so I can push my trap tight to that. Cause when this goes off, this is going to swing this way. It's going to try and slide your trap that direction because of the force of your, uh, I don't know, the jaw essentially shutting by having that little screw, my trap stays solid right where it's at. And I feel like I get, I'm going to get a little bit more consistent catches with that. Um, another thing I use, so this is literally just the bottom of a 20 ounce pot bottle cut off. I either use that or if I have tuna cans, I use a tuna can. This is big enough you can set a tuna can in the back. I like to use chicken, like a chicken leg or chicken thighs for bait. And then I use Hawbreakers Weasel Wear. Um, I don't know if this is the best weasel lure out there, but again, I've caught a few weasels with it, so I feel like I'm going to stick with it. Um, the reason why I put the little cans or, you know, the tin cans or the pop bottle bottoms, I set my uh, chicken in there. They drip and ooze and all that stuff, and I want to catch that stuff and not have it soaking into my box. Some guys might want it in their box, but I store these in a shed outside. I do not want my shed stinking like rotten chicken all summer long. 
So I could take these little cups and rinse them out at the end of the season and get the blood and any juices that may drip off out of my box and my box isn't you know perpetually stinking like rotten chicken. Again, some guys might want it to smell like that rotten chicken. I actually want, kind of want my box to smell like fresh chicken. So when I stick my chicken in there, that's the smell I want them smelling, not rotten chicken. All right, so the, this is about three and a half inches. So what I actually have done is I have a couple blocks cut at three and a half inches. Uh, that one is the lengthwise, this one's the sideways wise, or three and a half inches. And what I'm going to do is use these for spacers when I'm uh, uh, stapling my boxes together. Let's see. Um, again, I'm just using a normal piano hinge here on the back. We're going to shut my box so I can kind of show you. So I actually have it. You can see how I have it kind of folded backwards. You know, a normal piano hinge sets like that. I actually start it like this. So this is how my piano hinge is setting in there. And then it opens and can open all the way around. And it basically only opens until this face hits here. So as I open, so it kind of holds your box, you know, open, you know, so this basically is just so it's off the ground. Um, the other design feature so to hold my box is shut I know different guys have different things I did not want anything on the front of my box I want to kind of leave that you know so it's just the wood so they you know don't smell the metal and all that I just have a screw screwed in here and one screwed in there this one here I wound my wire around nice and tight and it's super secure I just take my wire bent it over I'm gonna try and do this so you can see oops Pull it down tight and I just wrap it around that screw and that's it all it's got to do is just hold that sh shut just in case like a raccoon or something comes along and starts messing with it so you can see it's not pulled super tight but my box can actually open and it you know it's shut um, try and make anything design wise if again couple of design features that I have that most people don't is it's skinny and I use the full board all right guys so we're gonna go over the actual winks of everything now um, and then like I said I already have some cut and I'm gonna kind of show you a little bit on how what all I do to my boards before I start assembling them uh, again I start with just a six foot cedar fencing board they're five and a half inches wide. It's 72 and just 72 and like about an eighth they are tall, which again, it doesn't matter how tall they are because, or it doesn't matter if they're over six feet because whatever's sticking out, it basically just extends out the front whip of my box. Um, so I have written down what the sides are. So we're just going to kind of give you a quick shot of that. So the sides of my box are 14 and a half inches long and there's two that are that size. The ends of my box are about four and three quarters inches long and there's two at that size. The bottom of my box is 15 and three quarter. And again, the top ends up being whatever's left and it's about 17 and a quarter, um, which if you add all those up, it only gives you about 71 and a half. But you have to remember you got eighth inch saw curves in between each one of these. So you cut off, you know, when your saw cuts, you lose about an eighth of an inch. And, and that's exactly what I lose when I uh, cut these. So I actually have my entire board marked off. You can see the lines where I'm going to cut it. And then what I actually do, I hope you guys can see. See these little tick marks right here? And then right here. Right there, you can't see those real good. You can see, there you go, there's my little tick marks. So what I have measured is from the end of my board to here is 14 and a half inches for one of the sides. I measured from here 14 and 5 eighths inches because again, I'm gonna lose an eighth inch for the saw curve here. And by putting these little dashes, that tells me what side of my line to cut on. 
if I happen to, you know, have my board on my saw, I use a chop saw. But if you're going to use a skill saw, it's the same way. I want to make sure I know which side of my line I'm cutting on. And I'm going to lose about an eighth of an inch. So from here to here is actually 14 and 5 eighths because I lose an eighth of an inch for that first saw cut. And again, then I cut on this side of my line because I got my dashes. So from here to here, instead of 4 and 3 quarter, which is the length I need, it's 4 and 7 eighths. And then I go four and seven eighths again. And then this one here is 15 and three quarter of the length of the board I need. So it's actually 15 and seven eighths to where this line is from that line. And again, you can see I put kind of my little dashes. All that is is just to make sure when I'm cutting these, cause you know, what I ended up doing for these stacks, I actually cut right here first, you know, so these two are still connected. And then I cut this one, this one, and this one. But if I would happen to pick this up and I have it flipped the wrong way and cut on the wrong side of my line, now the bottom of my board is going to be too short, you know, and I don't want that either. So again, the little dashes are, are quick enough. I, you know, I just use a square. I measure, put my tick mark. You know, you can see where I marked it. Use my square, draw my line, sorry, draw my line. And then I just go tick, tick, tick with my pencil so I know which side of the line to, to cut on. Again, so we got two at 14 and a half, two at four and three quarter, one at 15 and three quarter, and then whatever's left ends up being my top. And again, I have all those stacked up here. So I got the top, my bottom, two sides that are the same length, and the front and back that are the same length. All right, what we're gonna do next here, I'm gonna take one of these off of each one of these stacks, and I'm gonna drill, uh, this pattern of just half inch holes you can put as many or as few holes as big or as small holes as you want some guys will make a big hole and put a wire screen over it i'm like why that just seems like a lot of extra work i just kind of randomly drilled you can see i made some out of a pattern but they're not measured at all where they're at you can kind of see where you know like this hole here is actually quite a bit higher than this hole and you know, these aren't really, this one, this one, this one aren't really in line. This one's up a ways. I didn't measure them. I literally just drilled that pattern of holes in my end. So I just drilled some half inch holes just so I can get air moving through my box back and forth to try and get the scent of my uh, bait and lure out of here. Cause I actually put my lure on a stick and actually kind of smear it on my bait that's just inside of this hole. So again, I want to, have a little air movement through here hopefully that is blowing this direction through my box so if a weasel happens to be downwind of my box they can smell it and go right in you know they're going to try and go right in so that's the next thing i'm going to do i'm going to take one from each one of these stacks um if your boards look real similar in color like this one and this one look real similar I will actually number them and I'll put like number one on each one of these pieces that way I make sure this whole board stays together and I'll actually put like number two on each one of these pieces so I make sure those stay together again this one's a little bit darker cedar board you can see this one this one's been weathered it's been used a couple years so it's a little bit lighter in color I wouldn't necessarily need to mark those because I can tell the difference on them but like I said, I want to make sure I'm not, if I number them all, I know that those pieces make one box because I don't want to accidentally use like the bottom from that stack and try and use it as a side for this one. Uh, one thing I was going to mention, so my bottom, I stuck my bottom beyond. So it's basically flush with each end of my box. I don't want the end grain of my front and the back of my box sticking down towards the ground because the end grains of your boards will typically suck water up. They'll pull moisture up in them. I know the end grain is here, but it's not setting on the ground. So I wanted my bottom board to be the full length of my box and then put, you know, my front and back will are the same height as my side then. So I don't have like my front and back aren't sticking down longer than my side is because I'd end up wasting some board by doing that as well. Because again, I'm not going the full width of everything. You know, if you were going the full width like that, you know, you could cut your board that much longer and it would stick down flush, you know, with the bottom of my bottom board. But I didn't want it like that. Like I said, I wanted my board is actually this way. So the five and a half inches tall, that's how tall my box is. 
And again, I wanted to make sure too that when my trap goes off, that it won't hit my top. Uh, so I know some guys actually have their boxes a little bit shorter, but I wanted to leave it tall. How tall it is really does not affect how the box works, other than if you had it too short, it may actually stop your trap from snapping over. So again, that's why my bottom is longer than the sides, because I want my bottom sticking out and then my all my sides kind of butting up against to it. So all these are all stapled from the bottom to hold all these to my bottom board. All right, so in the back of my board, I'm gonna, the next step, I'm gonna drill half inch holes. Like I said, I'm probably gonna end up with someone a pattern like that, but I'm not gonna measure where they're at. Just put some half inch holes in the back so I get some airflow. I just wanna make sure I don't get them too low because I'll have staples coming in from the bottom. And I don't want to make sure I don't get them too high so I got room for my hinge on the top. So just kind of stay in the general center of my board. On the front, this is an inch and three quarter hole. And from all the research I did, that's kind of, some guys use inch and a half, some guys use as big as two inches. I, I decided to go with an inch and three quarter and I bought a Forzner bit that will cut an inch and three quarter hole. So that's what I'm going to be putting in the front. Um, and then once I get that in there, I'm gonna, I'll actually show you exactly the dimensions of where I put it on there. It will be easier to show you on one that's not cut. Uh, so the front, basically how the front is made, I drilled the hole, I cut it to size, which I already have right here. So there's my piece, you know, that'll be my front. I drill the hole in there, and then I cut through the center of my hole after the hole's drilled in there. So again, I'll, I'll give you some dimensions on where it's all located on there. And then, you know, on one, we'll whip the hole already in there. And then I'll just cut them in half and I'll show you guys doing that. All right. So when I get some of that done, we'll turn you guys back on and we'll show you the rest of it. All right, guys. So I'm moving on nicely now. Um, I took the drill press again, just half inch holes. Um, I didn't get real carried away what you said. I mean, they're not evenly spaced. I just wanted some holes so I can get some air through there. Um, when I was doing it, I kind of figured this is just a touch more than this. So this will be the bottom of my board, the top, because up here I'm putting my hinge up here, down here I'm actually stapling up in here. Not that it would matter if the staples hit my holes or not, but, and again, uh, this one here, this is going to be my bottom. That's my top bottom and top so I got all my holes drilled again just kind of evenly spaced I don't really care honestly you could put as many or as few holes as you want I think more is better um, you could use like this is half inch you could use like three eighths and put a few more in there if you want I feel like I must be getting good enough airflow nice and simple I don't want to be setting drilling holes all day either I mean you could do quarter inch holes and put a hundred of them in there if you wanted I just don't have that kind of time so this is my front, and what I did is because I saw my front, I put my uh, square in here to roughly compensate for the saw kerf. You can kind of see, you know, my hole is fairly round. So my hole is an inch and three quarter, and what I figured out is it's actually two and seven eighths up from the bottom, and about two and five eighths from the top. And then it's obviously centered on there side to side. So what I did is I found the center of my board side to side and drew this vertical mark on each one. I also drew just a little bit, a little arrow on there so I know which side is the top. And I did that on my one that I built here. Again, because they're not that much difference. It's only a quarter inch difference. But what I, like I said, I figured out that that gives me the difference I needed so when my uh, trap pan is about flush with the bottom of my hole. Uh, one thing I also wanted to show you, see there's a little gap down here in the bottom of my box. That's because when I shut my box, take that back out of there. I wanted my lid to be tight up here and I wanted this to be fairly tight here. So basically this is just shimmed up the thickness of my saw kerf essentially. So it's actually up just a touch higher because of that. So it's, again, it's like two and seven eighths, but I also have, have another eighth here. So it's actually almost like in reality, three inches. You know, it just gives the height of the bottom of my hole up just a little bit by leaving a gap. Again, this is airflow, whatever you want to look at. Nothing's going to go in and on there and meet some ants or something, right? But 
in the fall when I'm trapping, the ants are uh, not moving around. Okay, so what I did is, I, again, I drew a tick, you know, centered on my board side and side. That's the vertical mark on each one of these. That, so this is centered side to side. And then I went from the bottom of my board up, two and seven eighths, and I drew, you know, my little line where I want to draw my, or drill my hole. But you can see I drew a line all the way across on there. That, when I cut my board, I want to be cutting half on each side of that. So my saw curve is half on each side of that. So I'm actually cutting directly through the center of my hole. So I did that on all three of my parts here. Um, what I ended up doing, I couldn't find my Forstner bit. So what I ended up doing is, I actually found a hole saw that cut me, and I did a little test one here. So that's an inch and uh, three quarter hole. You can actually see it's actually tapered. So it's a little bit bigger at the front than it is at the back. I'm actually not worried about that. So on each one of these, I have my uh, arrow drawn. This arrow here, I have drawn on the front side of my board. So this would be the outside of my box, the inside of my box. Cause some of my boards have a little bit of a curve like that to them. So I wanted uh, the curve out, not the curve in. So I marked the arrows on the actual front of my box. So if anything, this this part of my hole will be a little bit fatter than the backside, than the you know the inside of my hole. That shouldn't hurt a darn thing. I'm gonna deburr both the inside and outside of my hole just a little bit anyway when I'm done drilling the hole here. The Forzner bit I like because it made a clean through hole. I'm pretty sure I know where it is, it's just not here. So we're gonna, because I wanna get these built, we're gonna drill my holes and uh, we'll show you when I'm done. All right guys, so I'm set up here ready to drill my uh, inch and three quarter hole through my uh, part. Uh, what I did off camera is I just uh, got that lined up with my mark, the center drill. And I drilled it through so now I can do this one-handed and push through and it will automatically kind of center my board up. I think what I might do here is we're just going to add a quick clamp just to hold it just because I can't hold it from spinning while I'm videoing for you guys. But let's see if you can get me. Okay, here we go. So. I do have a little bit of trouble with my uh, hole saw clogging up a little bit as I go, so I may have to stop and clean the teeth out a little bit part way through and then keep going, otherwise it won't cut. Okay, so here we go. So I'm just kind of plunging in and out. Hopefully it will kind of clean my teeth. Okay, we gotta be just about through. And there, we're all the way through. All right, take the clamp off. So you can see I got myself a nice clean inch and three quarter hole. It is tapered a little bit, so the front of the hole is a little bit bigger than the back. But again, I don't think that's gonna matter one bit. So we're gonna get uh, the other two drilled out just like this. And then we should be ready to, almost ready to start assembling. I still got to cut this in half uh, on my little line. You can kind of see the little line. So now that I got my hole drilled in there, I can cut that in half. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill the other two of these off camera. And I'm actually going to cut these guys. And then we'll turn you guys back on. And all I'm going to do to cut them is just take my chop saw. Hold this in my chop saw. And I want to cut... So it's cutting equally on both sides of my line. If it's off just a little one way or the other, it's not gonna matter, because again, it just splits open when I open my box. So if the hole, my cut is a little high or a little low on my, uh, centered on my hole, it's really not gonna matter. But we're gonna use my chop saw, you can use a skill saw or any kind of saw, and just cut through that guy. So we're gonna get the other two drilled, and we'll get them all three cut, and then we'll turn you guys back on. All right, so, Here's what I'm up to. We're uh, putting the hinges on the top. So what I did with this piece, you know, it's got kind of a goofy knot in here. And it's a little more rough on this side than this side. Uh, a little bit smoother on this side. So this is going to be my top. 
you know the top of my top so the top of my box like that so I what I did is I flipped it over and when I hold my hinge up like this you know at 90 degrees from here right here to the center of my hole from my you know this face to the center of my hole I figured out was three eighths of an inch so what I did is I went up on my board three eighths of an inch and then I figured out the center of my board, which these are five and a half inches wide. So I went two and three quarter and put a little mark there. And you see my little mark right there. And what I'm what that does is when I go and I'm making sure I got my hinge on there, you know, the right way. But now I could kind of just line up that little mark with the center of my hole there. Now I know that I'm getting my hinge centered on my board. Um, I'm not sure how well I'll be able to show you guys this, but get you a little closer here, maybe. And then what I'm doing is I'm just going to take my uh, take my screw, and I got my drill gun here, and we're going to just put my screw right on that little mark there, push down just a little, so it kind of starts my screw. Sorry, my board twisted. And you can see like, it's tough to tell with a screw gun how tight you're getting that. This is such a little screw and I don't want to split my board. So I actually have a screwdriver that we'll tighten them up all the way with. So we'll put the other two in. So again, I'm just going centered on my, uh, in my hole there. I, I, I pushed down on my drill just a little so it kind of started the screw so it didn't move. Okay, last one here. Okay, and like I said, it's kind of tough to tell how uh, tight you're getting them. So I'm just using a screwdriver to uh, make sure that they're tight. All right, so that one there is done. So my hinges are on all three of my tops now. Basically, I am ready to go start using my staple gun and stapling these together. Uh, I don't really want to put my top onto the back uh, just because when I go to try and nail my uh, back on, then I got to try and fight my top and everything else. So we're actually going to wait. We're going to uh, staple everything together except for the top and half the front. So I can staple my bottom, the sides, this little, the short bottom half of the front here in the back I can uh, staple on and like the back I'm going to make sure I staple it flush with the top of my sides even if there ends up being a little gap on the bottom I want it flush on the top and then again I may actually wait with this one the lower half of the front until I get if I get the sides the, in the back on I can actually put my top, screw the top, the back, other half of the hinge to the back. Then I could put my top half of my front on and staple that to the top. Then I can make sure that I can push my uh, bottom half up tight to that. So when the thing is shut, it basically hits right here. So again, I'm gonna, we'll get set up and we'll get my sides and the back and the bottom all uh, riveted together or uh, stapled together, not riveted. And I'm gonna use this as my uh, spacer in between to make sure that my two sides are exactly three and a half inches apart, which is just a touch wider than my uh, trap. And one thing I didn't mention too, I got my name tag stapled on, or nailed onto the side of my trap. In Minnesota, our traps have to be tagged. So I actually just use a little couple carpet staples to uh, staple my uh, tag onto my trap. I just drilled the second hole in the other end of it. So that's on the side of my trap as well. So I want to make sure like right there, you could see I'm about flush with that side. You can see I got about an eighth of an inch of gap here. And that's just going to allow you to get your hand down in your box a little easier to actually get your trap in there without it snapping on your hand. All right. I think that's everything. Like I said, we'll get set up and we'll get ready to start stapling everything together. All right, we're, guys, we're on the home stretch here. <clears throat> so 
So before I uh, quit last night, I got my uh, three and a half inch box clamped in here. So I got it clamped sideways. I made sure my sides are setting pretty even, you know, this direction. Um, I have them setting on my bottom and then I just lined up my back <clears throat> flush with the end of my bottom. What I'm going to do first here is I'm going to staple on my back to the sides and then we're going to flip all this over and then I'm going to try to staple the bottom onto my sides and the back. Um, the reason why I'm going to do that is so I can make sure that this ends up flush right on the end. Uh, I figured if I, even if I marked, so what I did is I just took my pencil and I marked along the edge because I got this about evened up on the, you know, the width of this evened up on the width of this. That part of it really doesn't matter because again, it's just going to be setting on the ground. So it doesn't really make a lot of difference if it's perfectly centered. So I didn't actually tape measure it. I just kind of eyeballed that my two sides were running pretty much parallel with the edge of my bottom. <clears throat> All right. So again, like I said, I are going to staple on the back and you can see my board moves a little bit. My board is actually warped a little bit, but I think as soon as I staple on, I'm going to staple one side. And then we're going to staple the tight side and then we're going to kind of push it in and then staple the other side. And then I can flip all this over. Like I said, I'm going to take this clamp off because this will be holding the width of it. Then I can flip it all over, get it all lined up. And then I, I'm going to staple through the bottom up into each of these boards. Um, all right. What I'm using, I just have a little staple gun. I've had it for a long time. If you guys don't have a staple gun, you know, you can use like finishing nails or any kind of nails. If you're going to use screws, I would, I would recommend pre-drilling your holes. Um, what I'm going to be using is just one inch long, uh, quarter inch wide staples. Cause that's what this thing shoots. I can shoot longer ones in here, but we're going to use one inch. Cause you can kind of see, you know, I'm going to be, my board is half. Some of these are a little bit thicker. So you're going to be like a half an inch or more into the other board. That's all I need. And I don't need a ton of staples either. And I'm going to show you why in just a second here. All right. So again, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to push this up tight, kind of get it centered. So this board ended up being just a bit wider than what my two sides are. I, I don't know if you guys could see that it sticks out a little here and a little here. Part of the reason is this particular board isn't quite as thick as these other ones. So this board is actually a good 16th or inch more thinner than what these other ones were. So that leaves me a little bit of gap hanging out on each end. I'd rather have extra on, on here than have it be too short and not be able to staple very good. All right. So we're going to kind of, I'm going to show you a trick. So I only need, I'm only going to put probably four staples in the end of this guy. And here's the trick that I learned. So if you shoot straight in just like that and straight in just like that, there's nothing really holding that from pulling back out. If you, I learned this when I was doing construction work a little bit. If you cross staple, so you staple at an angle like that, and then you staple at an angle like this, you know, so you're staples are going in in opposite directions when you have a force pulling straight out you can't really it's got to like actually bend your staples in order to pull them out the same is true for nailing stuff anything like that so you don't need a ton of fasteners if you put them in the right way so i'm going to actually aim down at a little bit of an angle and then i'm actually going to aim up at a little bit of an angle so we're going to slide this out flush with the end of my thing here all right so here we go we're going to That one didn't go all the way in. We may have to hammer some of these in because the cedar boards are kind of hard. There you go. That one went all the way in. Okay. I'm trying to keep so you guys can see what I'm doing here.
again, I'm just flexing that board in because it was, and I'm actually okay with having to come back and just tap these in with a hammer a little bit if they don't go all the way in. But like I said, these are cross staple now. So there's almost no way that that end is gonna come off of there. So I no longer need this. And my little block I got in here. You take that out. All right, now we're gonna flip this whole contraption over. And again, I want it flush with the end and I'm kind of eyeballing side to side to get, make sure there's about the equal amount on each side. It's not super important. And then like I said, I'm kind of eyeballing down the edge here to make sure my edge is pretty much straight there. You know, so I'm looking down this edge to make sure my bottom is running parallel with my sides. Okay, we're gonna, again, we're gonna cross staple these two. And like I said, I'll come back and tap those down with a hammer. So now that end of my box is held tight. What I want is I wanna get, I'm actually gonna staple straight down right here on the end. And I'm trying to line up to make sure my staple is gonna be about centered on my side here. And we're actually gonna staple straight down. And we're gonna do the same thing on this side. All right, my box is pretty well held together. I'm actually gonna add I'm going to cross staple like this and like this in the middle. So I'm going to put one on each end to hold my side to the bottom and then one in the middle here. All right. Again, I'm going to come back with a hammer and I'll just hammer all these guys in, but I, I'm going to take my clamp off here, set my air gun down. So there is the main frame of my box. All right, the next thing I'm going to do here, and I'm going to uh, shut you guys off and I'll get this put on there. What I'm actually going to do is I'm going to get my top screwed to my back like this. Because the next thing I want to do, I want to get that on. The next piece I want to put on is staple this piece onto my top lid. Because what that's going to do is that's going to actually dictate where the bottom half of it goes. Because I'm going to slide the bottom half up until I'm tight with my top half. And again, I can't, I don't really want to staple this on until I know exactly where this is going to end up setting on there. You know, so if this shifts back and forth, I kind of want this fairly snug. I want this fairly tight right here. You know, I could put it way out here like this, but I really don't want it like that. I want it nice and tight up, up to the, you know, when this thing opens. So it's going to open up like that. And I want it fairly tight. You know, and you can even like there, it's actually rubbing a little bit. I actually like the fact that it rubs because it kind of tightens everything up. So on the end, what I'm going to do, I'm going to hammer in all these staples to make sure they're all flat first. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure the width of my board. Again, measure down three eighths of an inch because that's what I had figured out from, you know, this face to here, what that measurement is and put a little mark there just to make sure my hinge ends up, you know, so I'm not way over like this, you know, so I end up pretty much centered on there. And then we're going to, uh, you know, use my drill gun and I'll put the three screws in there. Could probably actually drill it just like that. So what I'm doing is I'm just kind of eyeballing the edge here and the edge here. Probably could just do that and put my, uh, put the middle screw in, just make sure that it looks, you know, even on the edges, all the way on both sides, all the way to the front. Cause I also don't want to put it on there. Like, you know, so it's setting at like a real twisted angle here. I want to make sure it's on there fairly straight. You know, and the hinge itself, you know, has a little bit of play. 
you know, so that'll allow your door to move around just a little anyway, but. All right, guys, we're ready for the next step. So what I did actually, I didn't actually measure anything. What I did is I kind of eyeballed the gap here and the gap here centered it, kind of made sure that it looked even all the way along the side so my top wasn't setting a little wonky. And then I just used my uh, hammer drill there, drilled them in. I used a screwdriver just to tighten them up the final amount. So again, we're gonna, oh, my boards fell down. So hinges nice and even, moves freely. Again, I'm pretty even along the sides here. So what I did on this end, and it fell down here, so this is my my end board and I obviously cut you know a saw curve out of there so what I did is I stuck my uh, square here because it's about an eighth inch thick and what that allowed me to do is make sure that this gap is nice and tight so I can actually push down on my top and it's actually pinching all this stuff together and that way I know that I'm gonna get a nice tight my uh, top half of my front is going to be nice and tight to my top and then I kind of wind it up flush on each side the best I can and again we're going to take my uh, staple gun here and we're going to cross nail just a little you know we're you want know I think yeah we're going to staple cross staple just a little bit I don't want to go like way like that because it's going to shoot out the side but I'm going to do just at a slight angle and again, so I got this under there just to take up the saw kerf gap. Uh, I don't even care if this is actually pushing my lid up just a little bit. I just want to make sure that this seam is tight so it's holding my front tight to my top here. And what I'm doing is I'm just pushing back with my hand because they want to kind of tip out. So I'm pushing this way to hold them tight to my frame. And here we go. Okay, I think what we're going to do, oops, all my stuff fell out. I didn't want to guess where my uh, board was on the other side. Okay. Let's take my hammer, two quick taps. All right, you can see now my uh, top half of my front is on the top. And when I uh, take this out of there, when I come down, it actually is nice and tight right here. So it almost like locks it right there. So it's pulling like the slack out of the hinge on this end, which is kind of what I wanted it to do. So we are on the home stretch here. So actually what I want to do is I want to get this, the lower half, again, I don't care if there's a little gap there. I kind of want to keep that seam tight. I just think it looks a little nicer. So I'm going to burr this with a utility knife and then we'll come back. And again, like I said, we're on the home stretch, especially for nailing stuff on. Basically, I just got to get this guy. Got to keep it the right front to the front. I, I actually had turned it and then it wasn't setting on there straight. You need to kind of keep everything running the same direction. And again, I don't really care that there's this little, you know, little gap on the bottom. Again, a little extra airflow to get the scent out of my box, I think is gonna be just fine. So I'll deburr this and then we'll turn you guys back on. Four staples on there and we're gonna run a couple up through the bottom just to kind of hold the shape of my box all together. And then we'll be almost done. We gotta add a couple screws, a wire over the top and we'll be done. All right, guys, so I deburred my uh, hole just a little bit on both the inside and the outside. And again, I'll do this one. I can uh, just open the lid and do that one. Uh, before I staple the other ones together, these other two, I'll deburr all that ahead of time. Again, you can kind of see about how much gap you end up with there. It's about an eighth of an inch. And again, that's my saw curve. Because I, like I said, I kind of want to keep these tight. You could weave this down. You know, and then your your top lid's gonna hit up here and that's gonna stop before it goes down. You'd end up with a little bigger hole there, I don't know. I just think it looks nicer with it up tight to my top half. Okay, 
So what I just did is I just squeezed down on my top just to make sure it was all the way down. And I'm gonna try and do this so you guys can see what I'm doing. Okay, so you can see where we're gonna be there. Take my staple gun and again, we're flush on the side. So I cross stapled that. And then the last two staples, I'm gonna actually run just straight up here. And that's gonna hold my bottom to that front piece. And basically what that did is it just locked. So now I basically have a full box, you know, all the way around attached to that bottom. So it's gonna keep that nice and tight, okay? So we're gonna just take my hammer here. Okay, all my staples are nice and flush. The last couple things here. We got three screws to add in here. And to locate the first one, we're gonna use my rat trap here. And again, like I explained, we're gonna try and explain this a little better here. So I got my rat trap in there and I wanna try and leave like about an inch right down in here, right here. We're gonna use my pencil so I don't snap my hand. So right in here, I wanna leave about an inch. I know some guys like to have their trap right up here to the front, but again, if a weasel is right here, I feel like they're long and skinny enough, they could actually jump over to here and then keep going and miss this. And on the way back out, go from here up to here you know, to put their feet up here to help kind of pull themselves out. So what I want to do is I actually want to leave, you know, so that's nice and tight. One thing also, like, it's tough to see. But again, my pan is about level with the bottom of my hole there. You can just see the edge of my pan there. That's why I have my holes actually shifted up a little on my front. And then by nailing this on up just a little, it gets me to about that measurement. And I leave my pan sticking all the way up. Because like I said, when I pull this back, I want about an inch, you know, or even just a touch more. So that's about an inch. I feel like if the weasel is here, they're not gonna wanna put their feet down in here. And even if they do, they're still gonna have to go over my pan to get that way. I feel like they're gonna go from here and they're gonna kind of jump like that, you know, and kind of stretch their body out and put their front feet on there. And all six weasels I've caught in these style weasel box have all been caught basically with their front feet right on that. So it catches them, you know, this catches them right behind the front leg. So it catches them basically right on the front shoulders. You know, so the head of the weasels in, typically my weasels are, you know, snap down, come, and then their butts are still hanging outside my box. So they actually kind of freeze like that because this snaps them down and then their tail just kind of drapes down. So they actually get kind of froze in a goofy little L shape. Uh, if you watch my out on the line videos last year, you can see uh, my grand slam video. You can see uh, what the weasel shape looks like when I catch them in here. Uh, one more point I want to make. So you can see there's a little bit of a gap right here and it's pretty much tight on that side. But I also, like I said, I showed yesterday that I have my name tag nailed onto the side of my thing and the nails stick out just a little and your copper tag sticks out a little. I thought about putting them on the bottom, but I was afraid my little tacks were gonna come poking through the trap and I didn't want that. So I put them on the sides. So I'm making this three and a half inches wide. There's a little gap on here but back here, there's actually very little gap for that thing to move. But there's enough that I can easily get my hand in there and get my trap set in there without it, you know, snapping yourself. But yet I don't, like I said, there's almost no chance that an animal is gonna go by the side of my trap here. All right, so what I wanna get is I wanna get about an inch here. And again, you could go a little farther. I, I feel like, you know, 
something like that so i'm almost closer to two inches it's almost too far for a weasel because again they're kind of small skinny animals so i said i feel like about that inch mark and all i'm going to do is go on this end and i'm just going to put a mark i got a pencil here and i'm just going to put a mark just beyond my trap here i don't know if you guys can see my mark move my trap yeah right there's my mark and all that is is just so i can get my drill gun in here and put a screw in there so we're going to take my trap out um you can use pretty much any style of screw you want this is a self-tapping screw it's a number number eight by five ace long i actually like screws with a little smaller heads but i couldn't find any with a little bit smaller head so this is what we're going to use I'm going to just put that on my drill here. Oh, kind of going to get my drill going this way. So I just got my screw on my little dot I just put in there. I do not want to screw this all the way in. So I hope you guys can see that. I left that stick up about 3 16ths or a quarter of an inch. Because what I want is that to hit the back of my trap here. So again, we're going to put my trap back in here. So what I do is I set it in and I grab the dog and I pull it back until it hits my screw. So my screw's hitting about in the middle of my trap. And again, when this trap goes off, because this swings this way, it actually tries to slide your trap that way. By weaving that screw, it makes sure my trap sets nice and solid. So when that thing's snapping over, my trap doesn't want to slide. Okay. So that part of it's done. We got two screws left to put in and a piece of wire and we'll be done. For the side screws, I actually have used just sheetrock screws in the past. I actually bought, these are uh, number eight self-tapping screws. Um, you know, one inch long ones. I wanna make sure that my screw does not stick inside my box. It's very important that that does not stick inside your box because your trap's gonna catch on that. But I, I wanna actually make sure I weave it stick out as far as I can out here so I can get my wire wrapped around it. And that's actually, I, I kinda like having the little bit bigger head on there just for that reason. We're gonna grab this, my original box here. One thing I, I also figured out when I built these the first time is I do not want my screw way up here right by the top of my box because the way my top sticks out beyond my side you can't get your wire bent down and in there and then wrapped around your screw so I'm down like a good inch and a half you could put them wherever you want I'm actually going to go roughly in the middle of my board give me plenty of room to get my wire hooked on there so and then it doesn't really matter this direction where you put it I would try to keep it towards the front but you don't necessarily want, you know, you don't want it right here, I don't think. So again, I'm back about two inches from the end. And again, I'm going to go about centered in my side up and down. And again, that's just going to give me a little more leeway to get my uh, wire hooked on there. All right. So we're going to tip my box. I was going to tip my box over, but I didn't want to do that with my trap inside. So lay my box on the side here and we're going to go, like I said, somewhere about two inches back, somewhere about middle of my box up and down here. Okay. Flip my box over and you do kind of want these in line with each other. So I'm just kind of eyeballing them about by this line here where they're at I mean it looks like I'm putting it I am maybe a little bit above center of my box but still down probably good two inches from my top there okay we're gonna set my box back up so it just pushed a little bit of wood just so it's stuck in on that side this side's nice and flush uh, we're actually going to back this screw off just quarter of a turn and I'll there we go 
deburred the little bit of wood chip that it chipped in there. Last uh, thing, trapper's wire. And what I'm kind of eyeballing, I want that down and past some on that side. I know my wire kind of frayed apart. And then I got my lineman's pliers. Trapper's best friend right here. Lineman pliers with a little bit of fuzz on there. Okay, so there. So what I'm doing is I'm just kind of hooking that on that side. And I'm just kind of, all I'm doing is getting a gauge. I can always trim my wire off at the end here. Keep that hooked on that side. And then I'm going to cut it off about that far down. Because I want, I'd rather have too much than not enough. So, okay. It doesn't make a lot of difference. So we're going to start on this side and we're actually just going to wrap this around. A couple good tight wraps. Get my wire so it's running straight up here. We're going to kind of kink it on my top. Kink it on the top. And now I'm headed down and you just wrap that one little loop like that. That's all I need. I don't, and again, it doesn't matter that that's sticking up a little. My box is secured. You can't pull that open because it's pinching tight on the corners. When I go to check my trap, I just pull that open, tip my wire to the side, box is open. All right, guys, I think that's everything. Um, again, I don't put my name tag on my box. I put it on my trap. Uh, one thing that I do is I bring extra traps with me. Uh, I have, now I'm gonna have eight of these boxes. I actually got 10 traps. So I carry the extra two spare ones in my truck. So if I catch an animal, almost always the weasels are froze because I don't start trapping until close to Thanksgiving time. For weasels, I want to make sure they're all white. And they're typically froze by the time you get there. So I bring a couple extra traps along. So all I do is just take the animal and the trap with me. I don't try to uh, take the trap off of them. And all I have to do is just pop my trap out with the animal in it. Put a new trap in there. And away I go. So the only thing that I'm going to do for these is like I said... I typically store my trap right in my box, you know, obviously not set, but I'll store it right in my box. And then I'll, I'll get a, either a pop bottle bottom or a like a used tuna can or sardine can or something to stick in the back to put my bait in. And this box is ready to be used. It's ready to be set actually just how it is. All right, that's all I got for you guys. Um, I think I hit everything as good as I could. Uh, if you guys have any questions on any of this stuff, uh, feel free to leave them in the comments down below. Yeah, I think that's everything. Thanks for watching Schmatz Outdoors, and we'll see you on the next one.